Hello, and welcome to the Modern Romantic Podcast, where we celebrate, uh, or well, we revel in romanticism through art, storytelling, nature, music, poetry, <laughs> creating and passionate people doing incredible things. Hello, I am fucking happy, and that is fucking with an F-A-C-H-I-N-G, happy. Uh, with that, we'll again, uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Uh, if you are, if you notice, uh, we did not have the introduction video tonight. That is not a problem. Uh, but if you are watching live right now, you need to go listen to our other podcasts. Uh, they are available on all the best podcast outlets. Just look for us under Modern Romantic or visit our website at themodrom.com and click podcast up at the top. If you didn't know by now, we do live stream all of our interviews, which you are invited to join us. Interact with our guests every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. Visit twitch.tv forward slash the modern romantic to follow us and subscribe. And I think I added, an, an, <laughs> I added in a few extra syllables there. Uh, and don't forget to follow our social media channels. We also invite you to share us with your coworkers because you can't possibly annoy them any more than you already have. <laughs> Can we say that with just a little bit of just there. Right. Uh, tonight, uh, we have some incredible guests with us here. Um, the we have an opera singer Ooh. turned uh, turned life coach, turned fantasy author. With their incredible co-host, they are not only uh, fans of D and D. They are not only avid readers of all things fantasy. They have also written an incredible, incredible book series. Lords and ladies, Fay of the Realm. It is with greatest pride and deepest pleasure that, that I present to you Kristen Horn and Jacob Wise. Ah, ah, ah. You're so amazing. Ah, you're so awesome. ah. <laughs> um, it is such a pleasure to have you both on the show. Hello. Hello. I'm just realizing I forgot to to post on my social media to be like, hey, come hang out. So I'm gonna do that real quick. <laughs> no worries. Uh so hello Kristen. Hello, Jacob. How are you? It's a fine evening. It is a fine we're, evening. We're Pacific time and Oh, nice. But is yeah. it a fine night for singing? Well, I don't sing this late anymore, mostly because of where we moved. Uh, just like, eh, they, they like to keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I try to make sure I do any singing before the sun goes down, which now is 5 p.m. Oh. Thank you, time change. <laughs> right? So rude. Uh, so... Um, I I am honestly flabbergasted having heard and like read um read your backstories um or read the bio that um that we had put together for you um and I'm really interested to hear not only how you like met each other but your own like backstories towards uh coming into the coming into writing in a, an entire fantasy series um mm. so I think uh, in the form of a question, as Alec Trebek would ask, um, can you uh, can you please tell us how it came to be that you found an interest in fantasy writing? Oh, gosh. Uh, do we want the short story or the long story? Oh, <laughs> how how well, much you're, of a backstory do you want? <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to do it in the form of a question. <laughs> um, I am willing to take that answer in any way that you would like to answer the question. Well, well, I've been really working on an interpretive brief, dance, so <laughs> really brief caveat, and this is this is relevant, I promise. But uh, at the beginning of the campaign that we're currently playing, well, the the first campaign of the story that we're currently playing um, through in D and D, um, I remember I have this distinct memory, and we even saved we went back and saved the screenshots of this conversation because. Uh, Jacob was like, okay, you know, this is fifth edition. They do the backgrounds for you. It's really easy to get backgrounds together and, and do backstory for your D&D &D characters. And so he was bugging me. He was like, hey, what's the backstory on your character? Hey, what's the backstory on your character? And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. 
<laughs> so I gave him like a couple of details. I was like, maybe we could do this. It's like, oh, my character is inspired by Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. So it's like, oh, we'll do this and we'll do this. Um, that is the character that I think maybe six months later exploded into the book that we're currently writing. So I like, I, I love those screenshots now because I'm like, hey, remember when you had to like drag this backstory out of me? And now I'm pretty sure he wishes he hadn't because I don't think he knows what to do with the amount of backstory I've given him. <laughs> He's like, there's too much. Stop, please. <laughs> there are five other players in this campaign. Um, but to, I guess to go back to trying to answer the question, we met, Jacob and I have been friends for a long time. 18 so years? Extra syllables in there. Yeah. A long time, 18 years, something like that. We met in high school because we, uh, he had moved to uh, the town where I grew up in. And we, we had, Jacob likes to say, we had an outgoing friend that introduced us. Um, and got us in the same place because we went to the we went to the same youth group, I guess. Um, and then just kind of hung out. We were both nerds um, and we were all talking about Star Wars. Um, and then I wasn't allowed to play D&D &D, uh, until I went to college because my parents were. Yeah. Yeah. My parents drank the the uh, D&D &D is evil Kool-Aid. Yeah. Which, what you know, they were just doing their best. to. <laughs> that's such a strange analogy for. Like talking about someone who would restrict D and D, they drank the Kool Aid. They drank. I know, right? Um, so I like, and again, I don't. I'm like, my parents are not villains. They they were just doing their best to keep me safe and stuff. And I I totally get that. But so Jacob invited me to start playing D and D as soon as I graduated high school, and I was like, heck yes! And I basically have never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, I mean, I've been a musician my whole life. I went to college for singing um and biology but i dropped the bio degree because i was like no um i want to sing and so then i went on and did a master's in opera performance and decided that opera was not what i wanted to dedicate my life to i love it and it will always be a part of me but i didn't want to do like the singular opera career but i have always been a storyteller um and so when covid hit and i couldn't sink my teeth into a new role and a new character. I sank my teeth into my D and D character and started writing a book. That's the like middle, actually I'll call that the short version. <laughs> <laughs> Follow up questions. Uh, okay. Unless Jacob wants to add anything. I, I'm not sure you left anything to add. <laughs> but that's the short version. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have anything to add specifically about that. Um, just went over everything. Uh, the, the background in question is the inheritor background. Yeah. In fifth edition. So I asked her what her little uh, ancestral trinket w is, and that uh, that was what I had to drag out of her. <laughs> okay. So what was the ancestral trinket? A it... bell. Yeah. Okay. There's a there's a book series, uh, Sabriel. And it took inspiration from that. Yeah. So the series is, uh, it's called the Abhorsen series, A-B-H-O-R-S-E-N. Um, and they're basically necromancers, sort of. Like they can direct the dead, but it's all to like put them back in the grave. And they fight the real, the, the bad necromancers. And they do, they control the dead with bells. Um, and so oh. I took a little bit of inspiration from that. Um, so the the elves of this world ended up being very, you know, anti anti raised dead, anti you know, uh, zombie and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, I went with a bell, and uh, from there a world was born. <laughs> so now there are six bells and six elven clans, and there's a world tree, and it's just like, oh, okay. It, um, I was kind of stalking your Instagram page for a little bit. And that, Ooh, yeah. this this is kind of reminding me of that TikTok that you posted. It's like, how many books of D&D &D do you need? Oh, gosh. I don't know. How many are there? <laughs> um, but it's like, um, I don't know. How much backstory do you need? I don't know. How I don't much know. backstory how much is there? Do you need? How much is there? 
It turns out the answer can be a lot. <laughs> and isn't that like the best? Because it's so you... much fun. It, I, I yeah. love it. I, I just like, I, I, I love it so much. It was always my favorite part of digging into a new character. Um, like when I got hired for a show, um, there's always more. Yeah, that's right. Archer. <laughs> um, but you know, your, your job when you're acting is to figure out why your character does what they do. Um, and so that really, you know, in D and D, that's just that's your backstory, right? Okay, what's what what is their home life, and how is that informing how they behave and how they act? Why why is there that strong reaction there? And you just get to make all of that up. Um, and so it's just, I mean, you you're informed by the script um, and the choices that the character makes, obviously, in the show, the musical, the opera, whatever you're doing. Um, but but getting to decide all of the whys behind what happens on screen or on on the stage mm -hmm. oh my gosh it was just it was my favorite i loved i love the rehearsal process and digging into all of that um and performing it obviously is super rewarding but the rehearsal process has always been my favorite which i think lends itself to um now being a writer because I, it's kind of just all rehearsal <laughs> And it, for me, it's kind of one of those things like in the D&D, &D, it's, it's not so much the, the rehearsal for me, it's that like seeing how the character relates to other people and seeing kind of mm -hmm. what comes up. It's that, that weird, um, can't think of the word and I'm having to do lobster hands to like remember the word. Um, <laughs> Uh, improv improvisation. I don't know why I could think of that. Improvisation right? of the the whole thing and just seeing what comes up in the moment. It's like so Meisner, but it's like me. I, yeah. I yeah. Yeah. But and and improv only really comes alive if you know who your character is, in my opinion. I, there's a lot of people who don't have to have all of those questions answered in order to feel like they get to play and bring the improv to life. But that's like, oh, like my, I, my, um, I guess, uh, what's the word? No, I'm lost. I've lost the word. Um, I, my, who I put on the pedestal, I guess, is like critical role. The, the, you know, Travis Willingham, Laura Bailey, they're just like, they're so on, on it. And all, the whole cast, really. Um, they know their characters so well, even, even the stuff that necessarily hasn't necessarily been developed or whatever, it's just, they're always in character and it's so much fun to watch them. Um, also, hold on. I have to say, I love this name, Tilda Schwa. <laughs> right? Uh, like, why is there a Tilda on the Schwa? Like, mm, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Opera singer comment. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, we were talking a little bit before the before the show started, um, and I learned that um, Jacob is the DM for most of the games and that Kristen plays, uh, is one of the player characters for their campaign that they're going through. And I asked the question of Jacob and it's always a question I ask when I meet somebody who says that they are the DM. Are you the forever DM or do you actually get to play characters? Um, and Jacob's response was? I get to play the NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the I time, mean, sometimes there were, we've had a couple guests <laughs> that played an NPC. <laughs> that's sometimes true. Sometimes I don't even get to do that. Yeah, well, but also he like we we kind of pay for it in a way, like because I I mean this I'm saying that from the perspective of a player, but I also love that he does this. But he mods the crap out of his his NPCs. Like you're not getting like the the end of the first campaign we were fighting an illithid and one of the one of the players sent me a screenshot of the the monster's stat block and i was and he was like this thing is going to murder Wait, us there's what, no way what we happened can... hold on hold on i'm not <laughs> so so a player sent me sent me a screenshot of the stat block for an illithid and he was like we're we can't beat this it'll 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 completely kill us and i was like i didn't say this to the player because i if he was already demoralized from the fact that we were like fighting an illithid i was like bro if you think that's all that illithid is you've got another thing coming because like just the, there's no way he's just gonna throw a standard illithid at us and of course he didn't 
Nah. But he just so it's and it makes the game so much more fun and interesting and unpredictable is that he doesn't just stick with the stat blocks. Um, but he really likes to when he says he plays his NPCs, he does. He makes very intricate, interesting NPCs that are all different um, and scary, <laughs> like scary. Oh, like, I, I don't want to love... like his, you don't want to fight one of his wizards. Just don't just don't. Like, no, I'm going to run away. Run away! <laughs> <laughs> I really oh, hi, love Joe. it. Oh, hey, look Savage at that. Savage cabbage. <laughs> Savage cabbage productions? What? We do, oh, he, like, he added Savage. Yeah, he added. So uh, our publishing company, because we're planning on self-publishing, um, uh, our, so you have to, like, set up a, a publishing company. And so we went with Happy Cabbage uh publishing um and okay. which is a reference to bulbasaur who's my favorite pokemon um so open that can of worms um <laughs> and so when we do our dumb little like cabbage posts on tuesdays because on tuesdays we post cabbages um we put happy cabbage productions and so i guess we have a new one savage cabbage <laughs> Um, that explains so much. I was thoroughly confused, but also really enjoyed the, um, what was it, the most recent one you did? Um, I think it was uh, Fifty Shades of Cabbage. Uh, yes! Was... <laughs> that, that took me so off guard. And if you're listening to this, please go follow them. They are at uh, One World of Erda. Is, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Close enough. Okay. I mean, I you know I'm not the same. It's so correct Urda. to me. It's close. It's close enough. It's Urda. Urda. The kind of German pronunciation, but yeah. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> my my eight years of opera teaching have failed me. Oh uh, no! <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'll talk one of my diction teachers later. Um, but but uh, uh, please go follow them. Uh, they have really delightful stories. Uh, you do get a mix. Uh, some TikToks, you get a mixture of some characters, uh, some home life, some singing uh, from uh, from Kristen here. I'm not sure if Jacob uh, wants to sing, but if, if Kristen asked him to, uh, he oh he's shaking he his say no. head. No, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Well, they um, they it's it's very very charming and you your posts have a lot of heart to them so uh Aww. it was a pleasure to go through um yeah jacob's jacob's expertise on our social media is the, are the maps well actually he's been posting the the cabbage posts lately um but yeah his uh he, he just, the maps are from phenomenal he's just been sketching maps and then um creating like digital versions that have like wind currents and stuff and climates and i'm just like no <laughs> no that's, i can't do that like you you do your thing man so uh. it's not, it sounds like you have such like an incredible amount of of depth um it, like from our first question you had said that there's so much backstory towards your book series um but we haven't really kind of talked about the book series itself and mm -hmm. um I would love to give you a platform to to talk about your book series a little bit more in depth because I I've done a little bit of research, but I would love to know from the author's perspective what it's about. Yeah, Jacob, do you want to start? Um, no, I think you should go. Well, if I start, then you're like, no, I don't have anything else to say. That's um, fine. I'll, I'm sure I'll think of something. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so the book st story, book story, <laughs> off to a good start. Um, the book series, uh, we are working on our first trilogy. Um, and kind of, like I said earlier, it's, it sprang from the, like the inspiration for it was the character that I'm currently playing, um, in our D and D campaign. It's her backstory. Um, so it's just, just as a, like a really simple way of summarizing it. Um, it's how her parents met. Um, and it's, I know that doesn't sound really interesting, like right off the bat, but um, it, I promise it is, um, <laughs> or I wouldn't be writing about it. Um, but uh, the like, so a, a couple of other descriptors you could say is like, oh well, if the guy, the, her dad, my character's dad, is basically like the pope of their their elven clan, and so he falls in love with someone he's very much not supposed to. 
um, she, you could describe her as like a pagan hunter. Um, and she goes off and fights aberrations and, but she's also human. <clears throat> Very much not supposed to be together. Um, and he falls for her pretty hard and you just kind of get to watch that unfold. And it's been uh, so much fun for me to watch it unfold. I like, I think Jacob sent me a meme, uh, a while back that was like, uh, uh, readers be like, oh, we can't wait to see what happens in the next book. And authors are like, yeah, me too. <laughs> Cause like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we're just a surprise. We're like, I, well, I mean, I, I, ha we have it sketched and outlined and stuff, but little things well, will come out when you're fleshing out the narrative and the meat of it. And it's just like, it's like a life. It's like a life. I love yeah. feeling like I get to discover this world and then sharing but, it with everybody. Yeah, and for the first, I would say year, maybe year and a half, we would have these, you know, meetups every like Monday and Wednesday, or we would change it to Monday and Thursday. But the, the point is, we would um, chat over like messenger or text, and we talk about the book and different things that we were trying to develop. And it's very surprising sometimes when some quirk would just reveal itself because it wasn't anything planned. We didn't like have this in mind just going in but it'd be a little surprise that would come up and it's hard to, to talk about what, how that works because then we'd be revealing the surprise but one of them no isn't really so much about the book itself more um because we were doing this over chat we when we finally got together and we would say some of the names we would say them differently <laughs> like, what did you just say who are you talking about that's not a character <laughs> Uh, so there's a character, uh, one of the deities, their name is, hold on, Zivis? I want to spell it first. Damn it, I was going to spell it first. Yeah, it's it's Z-Y-V-E-S. And I read it and I just went Zeeves, obviously. <laughs> and then at some point, Jacob says it out loud and he's like, Zivis. And I was like, hey, wh what, who? But the one, and so that one I gave him, I, I, I corrected my pronunciation, but for one of our main characters name is Tharon, T-H-A-R-A-N. Okay. And then later Jacob throws this character at us named Theron, T-H-E-R-O-N. Okay. But apparently Jacob had decided that Tharon was Theron and Theron was Theron. And I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, no. Nope. the doggo. Oh, does she need to be let in? Yes. Okay. No <laughs> worries. Like let her in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold, please. I, Happy yeah, evening. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I can continue as we we're talking about the world, right? So just the world building has just been so much fun. And Jacob is so good at it. Um, one of the things I love about our dynamic and having a co-author is I think we complement each other super well. He's the world builder because he's the DM. And I very much feel like I he builds the world and I play in it. And I feel like I help build the world, but mostly because, because of my acting background and just ha always having to figure out characters and stuff, I just ask questions and I don't stop. And so the world then just kind of builds itself. Um, and so this first story, this first trilogy, is it's it's a love story but it's an epic one it's not super sappy it's really i love digging into relationships and letting people be real and letting things be hard um and letting people letting the characters deal with consequences um of their actions of whatever happens um and exploring lots of theming and stuff and so it's it's definitely not um that we 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 are very jacob brought up like tropes and stuff. And I did not like thinking about tropes at first because it felt like, oh, makes my story predictable. It's like, well, I mean, every story has tropes. You, you can't really avoid them. Um, and so we've we've done this thing where, yeah, Sage, that's our puppy in the background. <laughs> um, we've been very mindful of tropes and we're like, okay, which ones do we want to lean into? Which ones do we want to subvert? Um, <clears throat> which one do we want to eliminate from the story um, kind of completely. Um, 
And uh, so, yeah. Oh, there's one more descriptor you could use for this first trilogy is what if the, um, what do we liken it to? The East India Trading Company? Yes. Like, so the, the, oh. the real world, the East India Trading Company, what if they started hiring monsters to boost business? And so that's that's something that we're playing with as well. So it's, that's kind of the parallel storyline there in the in the trilogy. We gave we we let the first trilogy be really simple. <laughs> we're, I'm reading a book right now about a guy that gives you know writing advice and he helps new authors and stuff. And he's like, let your first one be simple. Like maybe just do first person, keep it to one character. And I'm like, too late. <laughs> He's like, also, don't start, don't, don't do a tragedy at first. Like, let it, let st stick with happy endings and stuff until you get some under your belts. Like, even Shakespeare did like six plays before he did his first tragedy, and I was like, yeah, uh huh, uh huh, okay, <laughs> that's not gonna happen either. <laughs> uh, but okay, we're doing our best. Um, but because of that, um, we are actually releasing our first drafts. I say first drafts loosely. We've already done a significant amount of rewriting and editing, but we are releasing um, the current versions of our chapters for free on our website, just so that like y'all can read it now. Um, we're almost done releasing book one as it currently stands. Um, and because we wanna share it with you guys, we wanna know like, what do you guys like? What do you guys not like? Um, and also we know this actually, this trilogy started as one book like at first we thought it was just going to be one book and um <clears throat> we finished book two well we finished act two and jacob looked at the word count and he was like I'm pretty sure this is its own book and so then we started to look at the word count for book three as well or act three and it was like oh yeah yeah these are probably its own probably their own books so book one though was very um streamlined um, and so we have a lot of fleshing out to do. And so we 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 would love um, input. Like, what are you guys loving? What questions do you guys have? What needs to be explained? Because since we started this as like, oh, it's act one of one book, there's a lot of things that are missing that we're going to have to go back and add in. Um, and so, yeah, we just wanted to share that with everybody and uh, see what you like. What do you, And also, like, where where would you want the story to go? I kind of love that because it's it's getting a collective audience. It's almost like you're inviting additional people into your D and D campaign. Mm -hmm. and it's like bringing people in to help tell the story. So it's yeah. getting it's a lot of or it's some audience participation, and I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, because like I know, like I love reading, love reading, and I like I'm just now I and now that I'm a writer. I feel like I have more permission than ever to carve out time in my day um, to read because the like, there's two things that everybody says about writers is like, and you ha and one of them is you have to make time to read. If you're not reading, you're going to be in trouble. You have to read in order to write. And so I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was as I, as I was contemplating this idea, like releasing the chapters for free, um, I was like, oh man, I would have eaten that up as, as like, like if, if, what? It's like, yes, I get, and I get to like talk about it with people and maybe talk th with the author about what's going on and then maybe have input about where the story goes or how characters develop. It's like, yes, <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Um, and, so you now if you, if you do well, maybe your name can be applied to a character that gets mauled by a bear or something. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all I've uh, ever wanted is to be an NPC who gets mauled by a bear. <laughs> um, I let's see, what was it? Oh. I joined a D and D campaign um, like a year and a half ago. Someone had left the campaign. Um, feelings got hurt, and they mm -hmm. were just like, Meh. so they left the D and D campaign and left an opening. Um, and the DM was like, "Look, I, you've never played D and D before. I understand that." but I'm willing to help you. Will you please, um, <laughs> hi cause. That's cause I'm, I'm not El Emily. That's not me. That's <laughs> this is Kristen, Chris, Chris. <laughs> um, so cause is one of our uh, regulars here. So hi cause. Hi cause. Hi cause. 
Ooh, we have a character named Cause. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. Cause, yeah. It's not spelled the same way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, that, that yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah, I that remember guy. That. Um, Sorry. No, <laughs> no worries. Um, so it's, um, I don't know, like, uh, we got into it. He's like, well, this is Pathfinder. It's still technically D&D. And we got, like, super involved into the story. And I realized very early on that I knew nothing and I didn't do my research for anything about this, about this game. And I just kind of ran into it head first. Um, and it was, it was actually enjoyable because I played a chaotic bard. Um, I played an Ifrit and, um, nice. and I aligned him, um, just playing pansexual. So I was literally a flaming homosexual, uh, running around, <laughs> um, but it, it, the the more that we got into it, um, we started to flesh out like a backstory of like family and how I hated my brother, but my brother also got turned into an ifrit because magic returned to the world, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it just started to kind of like what you were talking about. The more that I started to elaborate and get my own feelings out there, the more that my character started to become more complex and the DM mm -hmm. was able to do a lot more with it. Mm -hmm. um, and at some point we got to this necropolis where in order to get into the necropolis, you had to give up a secret. Mm. Um, and you, when you, when you gave that secret, you forgot it forever. So it's mm. like, it almost never happened, but the necropolis was like a library and it kept the secret forever and ever and ever for all men. Um, and if you wanted to continue to go in and out of this necropolis, you had to keep giving it secrets. Um, so it was always like, what's the secret going to be this time? Yeah. What's the secret going to be this time? Uh, so it it really opened my eyes to what D and D could be and mm -hmm. what what kinds of storytelling could be there. But it also mm -hmm. highlighted: do your damn research. <laughs> <laughs> do your character building. Do not do the like the the. Uh, the bad actor thing and like jump in head first do your do your research which and to to that um i think what one of the things that i really appreciate about 5e is that it um really makes that easy really makes it easy to make some quick decisions um about your character and gives you some parameters to play with some guidelines so even if you're like not an actor you've never done this before in your life and you just want to but you do want to do some role play and you want to you know participate in the storytelling in that way um 5e makes it really accessible that's the word accessible just so so easy with the backgrounds and the ideals and the flaws and stuff which you know if you if you check out our lore drops that i've been doing uh on our channel, um, we we model them after the D and D character sheet, um, just for some recognition to to be like, oh, okay, this is this is what those people are like, um, which has been a lot of fun. And and Jacob, I'm sorry, was I interrupting you? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <clears throat> what were you? What was happening? No, no, no not at all. Um, I. It's funny that Kristen mentions the the lore drops with the character sheets and earlier she talked about the tropes and TV tropes is a fantastic website for browsing if you have time to kill at work or if you want to have 50 tabs open in your internet browser by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> There's one that we heavily leaned into, which is Our Elves Are Different, which is kind of a fun one to play with because she mentioned the six clans and trying to make them well recognizable as elves because otherwise they're not elves and there's something else entirely but also give them unique uh, histories and culture and even their you know physical look their demographics are different so they've all got the uh, pointy ears but that's about as that's about it <laughs> mm-hmm So, no facial hair. Uh, right. Pointy ears, no facial hair. There you go. <laughs> That's all elves really are, right? Really, yeah. I, oh, no. <laughs> one, I'm kind of jealous 
Uh, but two, um, that they either have like no facial hair on the point of ears, um, whereas I have like these giant honkers for ears and like double all across my face. Um, so I'd like to move mine up to here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, uh, you have you have a, a very wonderful sense of humor about it, and that's and you also have a very incredible goatee. I can't even get to that <laughs> level at the moment. Yeah, it, it may be 10 more years and I can go to Comic-Con as Walter White. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have some comments here in the chat. Uh, Kaz said, D is a lot of fun. I played as Dragonborn who still had their tail, but they were forgetful Dragonborn, so they sk get scared by their own tail. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and once the wizard cast a spell on us and it made it chase our tail until we passed out. Yes! Uh, oh, that's fantastic. Um, so, uh, so it's clear that D and D has an incredible influence on you. Um, but you've also oh, mentioned yeah. that you are both like big avid readers. So I want to ask, um, what are some of your the books that you're currently reading, or what are some inspirations of uh, for this book series that you've previously read? Ooh. You want me to start? <clears throat> oh, of course. So a book that I just read is called A Violet Made of Thorns. It's young adult, but it's very good. Um, we we got it at, at Comic-Con. Some young adult, actually. It's worth it's worth reading. Um, right. No, I, I understand. Wow, that's that. it's, just a, it's young adult, <laughs> but... But it's, it's good. Um, uh, you, you could kind of see her kind of doing the same thing as, as we're doing, like leaning into some tropes, playing with some others. Um, she really likes to play with like the like the different fairy tale tropes as well, um, which was really fun to watch her do. Um, but I just finished that. Would recommend, would recommend. Um, uh, but as far as inspiration for our books, um, we I two immediately come to mind um, with, well, maybe three. Um, but Lord of the Rings, of course, which we we work really hard to not just lift from Tolkien, mostly because when you do that, people can tell, right? It's like, make your own world. But what I love about Tolkien's example, the example that he has set, is that it has really helped us kind of examine, you know, Tolkien was a linguist. So he, of course, he wrote and created all of those languages. It's like, well, I am not a linguist, so that is not what I'm going to try to do. Um, and my sister actually recently sent me a meme saying, saying stuff like that. It's like part of this idea of write what you know is like, like what, what are your expertises? Bring those into the book. So like, you know, my, one of my expertises is music and singing. So of course there's a lot of music and singing in, in our books. There's, um, you know, one of our main characters, um, is a, is a storyteller. Um, she has her own, you know, the strengths and whatever with, with, with that. So Tolkien inspires us, but it kind of in a, I don't know how to say it. Like we're not, it's, it's not like the Lord of the Rings and his, all of his world building has been inspired by examining maybe the process that he went through to create some of that. It's more of looking at like what he did with the dwarves and what he did with the elves and what he did with the hobbits and be like, okay, what do we want to do instead and saying, instead of just saying we should do that. Right. It's like, okay, what do we want to do? What do we like? What do we want to keep? What do we want to change? Which is where we started with the elves. Um, and we just went through that process with pretty much every fantasy race um, that's present in D&D &D and present in Lord of the Rings. And we were like, well, what do we want to keep and what do we want to change and, and, and play with? Um, which I think has led us to some fun, unique ideas where these some of these ideas are going to be a little familiar, but they're going to have a fun twist um, on them. And then, so Lord of the Rings, of course, um, the second book that immediately popped into my head, I'm looking over here because there's a bookshelf and it's on this bookshelf. It's called the Dragonlance Chronicles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that was, that was another D&D campaign that got set into that got novelized let's put it that way um and i guess one of the issues with when when authors want to novelize their D, &D campaigns is they tend to fill them with a lot of inside jokes and the story meanders and and um it doesn't work quite well um which thankfully since jacob and i have both read the dragonlance chronicles we were very aware of that from the get-go 
Um, so we, there will be a lot of like, oh, that's one of the reasons we stream our campaign, by the way, if you like D&D &D and you want to hang out on Sunday afternoons, <laughs> come, come hang out. Um, but, uh, so, uh, um, you know, if you, if you watch a D and D campaign, it does not always a novel make. Um, so, uh, even though we do intend on, on novelizing, novelizing, is that a word? Uh, the current it's campaign now. that we're, it is now that, that we're, we're playing, it will be significantly different. Um, mm. <clears throat> th there will be several beats that, you know, are the same, but, um, you know, just, you know, a campaign doesn't always port super right. well to, to well, novelization. That hook change. didn't work at all. We're going to remove it. Right. <laughs> like, that is meant for Peter out. You guys went into totally, you were like, eh, kobolds, whatever. <laughs> okay. Well, um, yeah. Do not say that too loudly because uh, my boyfriend, like, loves kobolds. So do not say that too loudly. Well, he's going to have to have words with the party that I'm running a game for. <laughs> So, and, and what was amazing was um, Jacob actually bought it for me. I think he just sent it to me, didn't say anything. And it just showed up on my doorstep, the Dragonlance Chronicles. And it was the annotated Chronicles. So there are the comments from the authors. And sometimes since they were also writing the module, they had notes there. It's like, oh, when we play tested this, this happened and this character died here. And then, and then the players tried this and it, it all went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> which is just like, oh, okay. And so, but, which is, of course, not what happens in the novel because the story Book must happens. continue. Yeah. <laughs> um, so having that example was was wonderful and apparently pivotal, um, according to the, you know, the, the author that we're consulting with, you know, since it's our first novel and stuff. Um, but the third novel or third books, set of books that comes to mind it's it's more of uh, the author himself that we we like to, mm, I guess, emulate in a way. Along with Tolkien is Stephen King. So one of my favorite uh, book series of all time is the Dark Tower series. And um, one of the things, one of the ideas that's present there, besides being a phenomenal story, is that um, all of these worlds exist. They exist. Um, they're quote unquote fake here or fictional here, but really all you have to do is find the portal and then you're there. And that, that world exists somewhere on some plane of existence. And authors are just given, um, I guess, access a little bit to, to seeing into what happens that in that world. And so that helps a lot. Um, I don't know if there are any, you know, any aspiring writers or, or even writers out there that are dealing with, you know, writer's block that helps me so much is I don't even really feel like I'm coming up with this stuff. I more feel like I'm discovering it. And that's definitely an idea that I got from um, Dark Tower and Stephen King. <clears throat> that's my spiel. <laughs> that is beautiful. Um, it's It's been kind of a through line for a lot of our podcasts that um, so many authors have referenced uh, works like Tolkien, or we found out that they also play D and D, and so there's mm -hmm. a lot of very common elements that that happen to pop up. I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all, because playing D and D is probably one of the best things that you should ever do with your life. Um, I agree. There, play 100%. a game. Yes. Um, go I've ahead, Jacob. Playing, yeah, I've been playing D and D for a whole drinking age person's life. Yes. 20, 21 years. I had to think about that one. It's like 21 years. Yeah. 21 years. Well, at least <laughs> here, you know. I'd have a couple years on like a German. <laughs> yes, Mary, you should totally. Oh, say, Mary said, uh, Kristen remote talking me into getting the, the annotated Dragonlance Chronicles. Everybody should buy that book, by the way. <laughs> it is really fun, especially with all the, the annotations, because like I said, they talk about. Well, some of them are, can be spoilery. So yes, I was going to say careful. that. Be careful. It's, Spoilers. It's important to know the story before you read those. But some of them, like, I think there was one. The one that stands out to me is that one of the characters, like, to, descended into a... Oh, maybe I shouldn't say this because if you're looking to buy and read this, then I'm spoiling something. Anyways, they do a thing and then they all die. <laughs> oh, no. Not the thing and then they die. Yeah, it's so... I mean, it's a classic trope. <laughs> I I love books Rock, like Rock that though. <laughs> uh, it's I don't I have honestly never heard of the Dragonlance Chronicles. Mm. Um, but 
and again, I'm going to bring this up and I know I'm going to get told I'm fired, um, et cetera. Um, I have never, I've never read Lord of the Rings and I have only seen like parts of the, the, the series. I've seen the two towers and that's, that's a lengthy explanation to say Ooh, why I've only seen the two towers. Um, so, so I am, I am, <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> and there it is. Yep. Uh, I am, I'm fired. Um, thank you, Archer. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, so it's, I am learning. So, <laughs> I am learning that I do not have a very lengthy, uh, timeline on this podcast much longer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, what I realize is that I think that I, have found kind of what my where my niche is and mm. I'm starting to explore more of that it's mm -hmm. just taken me a long time to get to to seeing these videos um, or seeing these movies and get to these works and mm -hmm. seeing how many people that they've touched um mm -hmm. and inspired is inspiring to me so yeah. um so while it's taken me a while and while I have to um get down on my hands and knees and beg to have my uh, co-host spot back at some point um <laughs> with uh with Emily the the other co-host of this um <laughs> I will make sure that I will have actually read all of these but my the my long meandering point is um it's fantastic to see that that fantasy is inviting to everybody and that it has inspired so many people and has brought so many people and yes i see the line of comments that are coming <laughs> coming to my boyfriend he's like i'm trying to concentrate stop please <laughs> stop um but it is so inviting and it's so nice to have that invitation into um into a safe space to create to to have mm -hmm. fun and to just have that sandbox of imagination again it's yeah. it's wonderful to have that again yeah yeah it's great uh, i will give you just a quick word when you start reading lord of the rings yes it's old it's old it's written in an older style um and probably that um one of the the guy that we're working with the, the author we're we're consulting with and he's you know giving us some pointers he uh, teaches writing all around, you know, all around the world at cons and stuff, different universities. And he always takes a poll and he's like, okay, who has started reading Lord of the Rings? And tons of people raise their hand. And then he goes, okay, who's finished? And like, Ooh. it's only like maybe a 10th of the readers have finished reading Lord of the Rings. And I had trouble getting through it. Like it, it is great. It's, but there are issues with it in terms of um, what now is uh, considered uh, not easy reading, but like he he Tolkien will spend like a page and a half, and that's probably underestimating it. Like describing a forest, and it's just like that that won't fly now. So you know, writers have to have to be a little bit more streamlined. Like Tolkien was the first. And so he got away with a lot of stuff that like, now if a writer tried to emulate that, you just won't see it in any other books that are being published right now. Um, so that's why it can be kind of a difficult read. Um, just so if you find it, you're reading it, you're like, yeah, yeah. And then you find it, you're like falling asleep. <laughs> it's okay. It's not you. It's not because you're less like a less good Tolkien fan. <laughs> it's because it's old. It's old and it's written in an older style. And we love Tolkien. And he like we wouldn't be here literally having this conversation if it weren't for him, which is incredible to think about. Like his legacy is insane. Um, but if you find the books difficult or maybe even like un unscalable, an unscalable wall, that's OK. You're not alone. Go watch the movies, the extended cuts. They're amazing. <laughs> Just go watch the extended cuts. And yes, some things got cut, but that's because these days they probably should have been cut. <laughs> and so that's that's what I want to have to say about that. Oh, and one more thing. I have not read Dune, which I think is like my uh like as a as a fantasy sci-fi nerd, that's my uh sin. Like I haven't read Dune yet. So Let we all have them. 
let the spice flow. The spice right. must flow. <laughs> uh, uh, got a couple of comments here. I'm skipping the ones that are mm -hmm, talking about mm -hmm. I'm fired. Um, I, know, let's I know. I know. I'm sorry, Archer. I know. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, reading Lord of the Rings in school almost made me drop that class. It's a classic, but it's rough if you're not used to reading books from that time. Yeah. Um, I do love Shakespeare, and I can actually get through Shakespeare pretty easily. And I do, yes. and I love Neil Gaiman. Like I love Neil Gaiman. <laughs> yes. Um, but Neil Gaiman, as much as I love him, can sometimes also be a slog. Um, yeah. Oh, interesting. We, I have not read Neil Gaiman, but we just watched The Sandman. Just, it's relative. But the set, the show, oh man, that was, was so good. Was it Neil Gaiman who who's quoted as saying, um, "What is it? Right." This is going to be paraphrased because I can't remember it precisely. But writing is, uh, was it? You write it down as a first draft, and then you go back and you make it seem like you it was all intentional the first time around. Oh, that so might have been Gaiman. Sound effect. Yeah, I remember. Uh, was that Gaiman? That sounds like something so. he would say. They say uh, writing is the art of taking a first draft and making it seem like it was all intentional. Something, <laughs> something to that effect. Ah, uh, yeah. Mary says, "Yeah, that's Gaiman." That's Ooh, such a great quote. Horribly butchered quote, but yeah. it's but it's a great idea because we've definitely experienced that on on our journey writing this. Um, like it's it's one of the reasons why I'm glad. That as, as much as I'm like, let's get the first draft done. Um, I'm glad that we're taking our time with it because as we're working through book three, there's a lot of things that we can go back and, um, well, I mean, a lot of stuff is there already, but go back and like, don't, we're going to ruin some magic here, but make sure gets foreshadowed and inserted and, and built into book one. We're seasoning it. We're just kind of peppering these yeah. little tidbits. And, <laughs> there you and go. The salt <laughs> levels are correct. Um, <laughs> let's see. Just a quick pause here. Uh, I was just getting a quick message on the side here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. I uh, will cut this part out. Um, so when it... Um, when it comes to writing the book, um, I know, and uh, I think Kristen and I can share, like, sometimes characters have, like, not a lot of backstory, or we start digging into it, and there's not a lot in the script. So when you're creating these characters, and you're developing themselves, what struggles do you go through? Or what hurdles have you found in writing this book? And how have you ever, ever eh, overcome them? Well, one of the good things about doing this together is that where we are deficient, the other often is well adapted to, to whatever it happens to be. Uh, Kristen was telling me about this particular passage that she was working on, and she was struggling with one of the characters. And she told me that she just tried to think of the most annoying thing that a person could do in that situation, and she's going to let me go back and refine it. <laughs> Okay, oh, in my that defense, was, that, was a, that was a nice <laughs> ego boost for the day. <laughs> this is a character that he created, and I find this character absolutely maddening. Maddening. And so Jacob was feeling a little stuck on this section. And so I was like, all right, okay. So I went through and tried to, you know, write a first draft. And, but this character was involved, and it was like, I have to write for this character. I don't understand her at all. And I was like, okay, well, if I had to write her though, how would I do it? And that, that was the question that I asked myself because like the characters are working on like a serious problem, like a serious problem. Like this is like, this is a huge threat to their livelihoods, to their people. And all these leaders have come together and they're, they're working to solve this issue. And she's just screwing around, distracting people cracking jokes and it's just like i hate her so much I'm so i guess i've written that. her correctly that's great <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah and then yeah jacob can go fix it <laughs> yeah but um in terms of like challenges uh uh i have trouble writing big ensemble scenes because mm -hmm. of my actor tendency to be like well i must 
make sure that all of these people are real people because the, the last thing that I want is really for even the one-liners to be, come from characters who are flat or uninteresting. We're like, no, this is a living, breathing world. So everybody has to be a real person. And so the temptation there, of course, almost it feels like an obligation to me is like, okay, well, that means anybody that's in a scene, I have to go and make sure I know who they are, what their family life is like, and what a little bit of their history is so that I, I can write them um, and their reactions so that I know what their reactions are. Um, you don't have to do that. <laughs> that's insane. Um, and I recognize that. Um, but that is one of the things that I still, if I'm trying to do the first draft of a big ensemble scene, I run into that a lot because I'm like, I get o overwhelmed because I'm in too many people's heads. Um, I feel like I can't, I can't, um, can't hear any one person's reaction because there's, there's, there's too many people talking. That's, that sounds insane as well. But um, I, I do feel like I do much better with the more intimate scenes where it's between like, you know, the two main characters or um, the main characters and the people that are close to them. Cause those are the, those are the characters that I'm, I'm more intimately familiar with and I can gauge their reactions um, pretty easily at this point. Um, it's when, yeah, <clears throat> it's when a main character goes into like a completely unknown situation. And she, she, or he doesn't know these people that I'm like, well, if, well I, I don't know them either. Jacob, <laughs> <laughs> you write this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what you were working on. <laughs> I don't even know the main characters, so that's going to be a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he keeps saying that. It's not true. Oh, so that was a fun that was a fun experiment. These main characters, they showed up in our campaign. And it was very interesting uh watching that character like be totally who she is she's very abrasive and she does not care for mm, I don't know, what, how do i say this like just being overly polite like she did like she's she's gonna she's very abrasive she's gonna she's very direct um and she doesn't really care if she pisses you off um and so watching jacob play that character uh in a room with a couple of very touchy people i was like Oh, there's a powder keg. Like we are just waiting for <laughs> something to explode. It was kind of scary. It's like she's just a loose cannon. And I was like, is this what this feels like? <laughs> so that was a that was a fun experience. <laughs> I I want to go back to that comment. Well, the powder keg comment, but also the <laughs> um, like being in too many heads at once. And it makes me marvel at people like Sondheim or Bernstein, oh, um, my gosh. or like um. Uh, why can't I think of composers' names? Um, uh, uh, Jonathan Larson, uh, okay. writing like Christmas, uh, the that like Act One finale ish thing, the Christmas bells, where you have mm. like all of these characters talking interspersed to one another, and oh they're gosh. all conveying different ideas. And I'm like, who do I pay attention to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> and it makes me it makes me love that they can do that. But it's it's like writing a line of polyphony. And it's like you have to write yeah. it one line at a time and then just adjust as you go. And I'm like, it's yeah. still it's still too much. Like, please condense. It's way too much. <laughs> Let's go back to, to Gregorian chant. Like just one one melody at a time, please. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of melisma at the end. Great. Uh, that's a nice yeah, great that's deal. A, <laughs> That's en that, that that's enough. Uh, but oh as my goodness! Welcome to um, oh god, you're bringing up so many music school memories. Uh! <laughs> oh, what? the fun thing. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Oh well, you know, being a musician, um, these elves. Uh, we've been playing with um, a lot of in in D and D. Um, and kind of in general storytelling, right? Um, we, we decided to, to play with um, what, I don't even know where to start this actually. So the elves are being, are, they worship uh, what the, the chord, we just called them the chord, the mystic chord. So we've pulled that straight from Scriabin. Um, and so that's why there's six clans of elves because there's six notes in the chord. Um, 
<clears throat> and then what we decided to do was that these elves are, because they worship beings of sound and they were created by beings of sound, they are also beings of sound. And so what we've decided to do with the world building is that, um, you know, in, in uh, D and D, uh, if you if you're like looking at a really holy cleric or an angel, right? They're like they're got lots of bright light, right? Um, they're glowing, glowing with light. And then like if if you're like evil or whatever, then you've got like darkness surrounding. And so what we've decided to play with instead with these elves is they're if if you're talking in D and D terms, uh, collectively they're true neutral. Okay. And so instead, what we've decided to play with, um, since they're not really on like a good versus evil polarity we've played with sound versus silence which to mm -hmm. us as readers are very neutral ideas sound versus silence there's no good and bad there there's just they just are right um but for them as beings of sound silence would obviously be their antithesis and not a good thing um so that's been a lot of fun with uh fun to play with is just like keeping descriptors and how these how the elves think um closer using words that are talking about the like hearing or speaking or or the first things they notice is somebody's voice as opposed to somebody's eyes you know something that they would see um so that's been but that and that all came from i think it was jacob's decision to to use scriabin's mystic chord um as a pantheon um and that's been what, that's been a lot of fun what are the deities names yeah, so the deity's names, we're we're actually gonna do lore drops on them soon. Um, so we've got Doe, Fie, who's next? Is it Taya? Taya, then Mie, then Lae, and then Rhea. So it's okay. just Solfege. Yeah. Which I adore. And we've and uh, the other thing that we're working on right now is kind of developing their magic system to be musically related right so some of the some of the chanting that they would do if they include certain harmonies it'll augment the spell in certain ways um which you know i love yeah <laughs> but jacob's the wizard so i always have to make like go back to him and be like does this make sense <laughs> i'm like <laughs> well well we're not doing this in D, &D so it can is usually right. the answer yes yeah <laughs> Look, she doesn't I'm like she wants definitive <laughs> and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Definitely the player DM uh, dynamic of is this how it works? And she looks to me for like some authority <laughs> of yes versus no. I'm like, well, we're writing this together, so maybe that's um, true. You're that the music, is true. Yeah, you're, you're the music expert, so you have to tell me how this might impact things. Yeah. Well, oh, so one of the things that we did right off the bat was that it influences which clans get along with each other. So, and mm -hmm. and and we decided to pull from our from our so the Western understanding of harmony versus dissonance um, for that influence, um, just to you know give give us some familiarity. So, like the Doeacene elves get along really well with the Miocene elves because that's a very pleasing harmony to our ear. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like the doe scene do not get along with the fie scene, um, which is a tritone. Yes. So for the musicians out there, like that's, that is, or for the non-musicians out there, actually, that's a very dissonant interval. It's like, if you play those two notes together, you're just like, Ugh, please yeah. don't like very few composers have gotten away with incorporating, uh, tritones into their music. Bernstein is one of them because he's amazing mm -hmm. um, and make it sound pleasing and, um, and, 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 and um, desirable. Uh, Digimon, the Digimon theme did it too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, yes, thank you. Yes, there's oh. a tritone in Digimon. Um, but uh, we're playing it with like, you know, Doe and, and Fie, like the, there's that dissonance there. Um, and so it's just, it's been a lot of like the, the Lyocene elves, they get along the best with everybody like all around, because if you take just, you know, lie and compare her to the, or them to uh, the rest of the deities, um, they harmonize the best or the most pleasing with everybody else. So it's, it, it gets really involved. And uh, so I guess I'll stop there for the non-musicians, but we, we have been digging into this and it has informed a lot of the world building and it's been in so much fun. So much fun. Look, all I'm asking for 
all I'm asking for <laughs> is some kind of reference to Do Re Mi from The Sound of Music. That's all I'm asking for. I think there might be one. I'm there serious. might be one, like straight up. I think the two characters. Yes, there is. There, it's in book two, so you have to wait a bit. Okay. Um, but they're they're having a conversation, and he, and one of the main characters says, "I I don't know where to start." And she's and the other character says, "Well, maybe from the beginning, I've heard that's a good place." Oh, yes. I was like, ha, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. uh, I now have to read this book series. Yes. Uh, <laughs> You have convinced me. Um, <laughs> Wonderful. I we just we I it's been so much fun. It's been so much fun. And um, if there's any other writers out there, I think what I want to say the most is like lean into like wave wave your free flag. Like lean into the stuff that you love. Like if you want to write, write about the stuff that you love because like it. And then the process is so much fun. It's just, which is so important for writing a book. Or doing anything, really. Like, if you're not enjoying the process, man, like if you're an actor and you don't like auditioning, like, huh, you got enough, you got a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> like, your job is auditioning. Like, if you can't get over that, I don't know what to tell you, man. Maybe you go find something else. Um, yeah. That was actually kind of the reason why. Uh, I I hated auditioning. I hate yeah. auditioning. Yeah. Um, it's a huge hurdle for a lot of people. It's, for quick tangent, um, it's the walking into a room and having like a set package and it's almost like that elevator like delivery. It's like, mm -hmm. here's, here's my best thing that I'm going to give to you mm -hmm. now. And you either hate it or you like it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times it was um, kind of frowned upon. Um, mm -hmm. Like well, I'd walk into a room and it's like, you are tall baby face and you <laughs> sound like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, you need about 20 years and then we'll come back to you. You need to yep. walk back in this room looking like Walter White and then we'll consider. And sounding uh, like that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Opera, so, I think, is, I mean, every art form has their set of boxes. Um, I just, I, it sounds like neither of us fit into any of the opera boxes. And so it's just like, all right, peace. <laughs> I'll, I'll go make my own box. <laughs> With blackjack? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh uh, it's from, it's a Futurama. Futurama. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bender um, says he's going to go off and make his own thing with Blackjack and something else. And yeah. <laughs> I, promised, I promised I've watched Futurama, but I don't remember that. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no. It's okay. Uh, we have, well, I, I don't know about Jacob, no. how many times Jacob's seen it, but I basically have Futurama and Parks and Rec on like constant loop. So I'll finish Parks and Rec and then go watch Futurama and then I'll finish Futurama and I'll go watch Parks and Rec. <laughs> and I'm trying to break that cycle. Yes, he is. We started watching The Office. All right, UK or US version? US. US. We tried to watch the UK version, my, my husband and I, when we were in Kansas doing my master's. Um, we tried to watch the UK version and I fell asleep and I thought I had gotten used to British humor. Um, which I have, I've gotten much better, like more acclimated to British humor. And there are some British comedians that I can't get enough of, <laughs> but I could not do the UK office. I was so bored. <laughs> oh. um, I have not watched either one. Yeah, that's that's all right. It took I'm... us a long time before we, we got around to watching the office. Yeah, her brother loves it, so he yes, would, he watches it a lot. And I'd yes. always had a passing interest. I've seen some clips, but never had the the particular <laughs> opportunity. But now, yeah. Tilda says you're not fired for that. So oh, thank you, thank Tilda. God. Yeah, thank you. thank you, thank God. Yes, I have graced the stage for about yeah. ten minutes longer. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, my goodness. So when it comes to um 
when it comes to like future projects, because you said that mm -hmm. you have this is your first trilogy. Yeah. But... yeah. We have three total slated so far. <laughs> Um, and it, would you care to share any uh, future plans Ooh, with us? Um, or is that spoilers? Well, it could be. Um, no spoilies. I don't know. Jacob, how would you describe? So, well, the second trilogy will be... Um... About the campaign. That'll yeah. be that one being re um, <laughs> novelized. It'll yeah. be booked. It'll be... Yeah. Um, what's another word for turning uh. something into a... A story ported ported i don't know ported into uh, a novel no. <laughs> so so the the second trilogy will be more about the the campaign that we're currently playing um so all those spoilers and, are on youtube that's true um uh, well, well for the most yeah, part there's the a couple missed episodes that's true Ugh. yeah that was my fault but um the third trilogy we're not sure how much farther in the future it will be but it does concern my favorite thing about this world is the elves of course because they're music and they you know with the chord and everything and so it will be you know mostly concerning the elves and i don't know what else to say that's not super spoilery what else could we say um i don't know i don't know how to describe the third trilogy without spoiling it yeah, I mean, we don't really have to talk about how the 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 plot or story that we want to uh, do, but you know, want to uh, this trilogy is definitely on the uh, adult side, not mm -hmm. uh, okay. as opposed to young adult or children's books, not the other kind of adult where you go into a dark room in the back of a movie <laughs> shop. And so the future projects, you know, we want to branch out and do sort of young adult and maybe children stuff uh, because, you know, there's a character that Kristen developed, a bard that could oh, yes. uh, really lend itself to the children's stories. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. We, we did a, a short story contest. Oh, gosh. That, I mean, we want to maybe do like a, a collection of short stories that are set in the world that, that could explore some of the territory that we don't in the elf centric trilogy mm -hmm. because they're in talking about the different races we did a lot of development and trying to make them unique but also make sense within the world and, and try to reconcile it with some of the other ideas so there's a lot of room for exploring the, the vastness vastness it's it's a disc world it ended up being so there is a oh, an edge you can fall off of so I, I guess it's not as vast as other places but so the short story uh idea was recent we we want to explore some of that um mm -hmm. so there's a lot of projects that we have yeah that's created. true that's true and that's just writing stuff we gosh i want to run a uh, games mm. for people outside of the the normal group and share the world and, and let them um, interact with it because for me one of the the great things about this project is that Kristen comes with these questions that make me develop things that I might not have because <laughs> I need to have an answer when it comes to the game time <laughs> <laughs> can it Okay, without it being too spoilery, because it sounds like she asks some really great questions. So what is your favorite question that she's asked you that Ooh. you've had to come up with an answer to? That's Oh, no. That's... Oh. Nobody's ever asked that question. I Which makes it difficult because I don't... <laughs> there's been so many questions. How do I possibly pick one? I feel like you were going to answer as well. I have an <laughs> idea. I bet I know. I bet I know. Well, yeah, it was about one of his villains, one of his NPCs, because we were playing with the idea that um, one of our one of the main characters, because we're like as we play through this game, we let the game unfold organically. We don't try to put any, um, we don't try to railroad anything. We don't try to uh, make things that we're pretty sure are going to happen in the book happen in the campaign, because that's just not a. It's not fair to the players, and b. It's less fun. Um, uh, so I very much look at the game as kind of like a uh, uh, an alternate timeline. 
basically to how events might unfold in the world. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't talk about it. Like, okay, how might this be adjusted uh, for the book? Or, you know, what are these th things that I can see coming up in the, in the novelization? And so I started asking him about one of his uh, BBEGs, which he calls Mask. Um, and I just fired off like a big volley of questions about Mask. Cause like, you know, like I said, I've said a couple of times, I love digging into characters and making them real people and making sure that they're dynamic and interesting. And so that goes for our villains as well. All of our villains are real people with what I think are interesting motivations, um, even if they're just straight up the bad guys. Um, like their motivation, like they're, they're interesting people. Um, and so I got curious about Mask and because uh, he was kind of a direct threat to my character there for a bit. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just sent off a bunch of questions and he has said a couple of times how much he like really enjoyed answering them. Just like, so that would, that would be my guess as to answer that question. <laughs> That's interesting because I was trying to think of one specific from that set of questions that you sent. Oh, okay. So, so I, I was close. Um, yeah it's on the it's on the uh it's on the right track we have a, a workflowy where we both write and develop things but at the end of it i have a section that's like you know dungeon master section keep out and then she'll type, <laughs> she'll type something and i'll type a response and um but that's where i put all of those questions and go to it and i think the biggest one was that these the the, the bell that Rana has Kristen's character is an elven artifact, and only elves can use it. And Bell mm. uh, Mask got hold of one of them, Ooh. and she she asked, "Well, does that mean that Mask is an elf because he clearly used it?" Which is my favorite question that I can't tell her the answer to. Oh, <laughs> he's oh. called Mask for a very specific reason. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's a, it's, a, it's, an, it's a choice of attire, but um, yeah, so yeah, I can't tell her the answer, but it is my favorite question that she's asked. No. One day. <laughs> he can't answer the question, but my character, because she is a cleric um, and we, we, we went through this, this conversation about like, okay, you know, you know, the, the, the holier the person, the brighter they glow, blah, 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 sort of thing. And then the other holy people, they can see that glow. Well, with the elves, so if we're playing with sound versus silence, then um, the, you know, the holier the elf, the, the kind of the stronger their hum. So their, their holy aura is audible. It's to only elves, though, and really to only elves of that clan. Mm -hmm. um, the other clans can't hear each other's hums or auras because they're tuned to a different deity um so my character is a little weird and she was born with a defect and she can hear everybody's hums um and so mask doesn't have a hum which doesn't necessarily mean he's not an elf because jacob still won't answer the question but at the very least he doesn't have a hum it's like well that's all i've got <laughs> oh okay this I both love this and despise this because Seth, the, um, Seth, um, uh, my boyfriend, does the same thing. We recently started watching. Um, we're like halfway through Naruto Shippuden. Yeah. And I am asking him so many, so many questions, and every single time it is always maybe, maybe <laughs> not. Who knows? And I'm like classified. That's classified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least you have a timeline to when you're going to get that answer. <laughs> With Ooh, the way our campaign goes, I up. have no freaking clue when I'm going to learn some of this stuff. <laughs> I felt that right here. Uh, that, that hit. <laughs> and here we lay Jacob, <sighs> um, slain by co-writer co Kristen. Yeah. I, I have a I have a tendency to add, when I'm building adventures, I have a tendency to put too much in because I over... I underestimate how long it'll take the players to do stuff. And so, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm prepped for this session, but that's it. And then that prep goes for three sessions. Three weeks. Yeah. I'm like, well, that took longer than anticipated. Our, and... our dungeon crawls are, like, month long. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> really? Basically, that, yeah, yeah. That can be, yeah. Uh, and, it, and again, it's because I I overindulge my uh, creative side when but I'm messing with them. It's interesting, though. It makes the, again, I think one of our MOs really is this world is alive. And so these details would be there because the culture that built it would have put them there. And so if it makes it take longer in the game, then it makes it take longer in the game. But it's just, it's, I think it's more fun and interesting that way. And there's a lot of stuff we miss. <laughs> <laughs> we miss a lot of stuff. Hiding, uh, hiding behind, yeah, my hiding, hiding. hiding behind my cup of shame. Um, yeah. We have definitely been in that situation of we needed to find something in a room and we're all just rolling garbage. Oh like, my God. Everybody yeah. rolls in that one and the DM is like, yep, you found jack nothing. <laughs> um, and he's just like, well, what are you going to do now? Um, yep. What do you do? Well, it's like my least favorite DM question. What do you do? I well, guess we retire and live in the countryside. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to With learn our to farm? mountain of gold. I think my uh, quick anecdote uh, back yeah. to the flaming the flaming homosexual um, that I played. Uh, we were in um, water in the Underdark um, in Waterdeep. So um, in this market of just the most like seedy sort of demons that you could imagine. And we, I said, what is the nicest shop of all of these dingy places? What is the nicest shop that we could walk into? And he goes, okay, well, you know, it's this shop over here. It looks like it could be an alchemy shop um, with that's run by an incubus. And I went, perfect. So walked inside and um, my character had a feat that you could like swap whatever whatever the, the check was with one of his performance checks because I did much better in performance than I did if I used that specific yep. skill. Yep. Um, so what I used was intimidation on the incubus and I got a nat 20, which turned into a roll of total of 46. Uh, oh to my god! Intimidate uh, this incubus, and um, I basically forced the entire po party out onto the field, kicked out by the incubus. Door shut, locked, latched, everything in a face. And I went, "Wow, the demon that's really trying to suck the soul out of my body really just kicked us out and said, nope, not these peeps.'" Uh <laughs> yup. That's some 3.5 numbers right there. 46. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 oh, goodness. Good old bards and Pathfinder 2E. Um, yeah. yeah. That's a, I, you said Incubus, and that reminds me of a story of, of one of the characters in the game uh, that ooh, they were he... investigating this. Oh my gosh, this character is so much fun. Sorry, I had to say yeah. that. Like, he is one of my favorites. Whenever this character gets to do anything, the player They're character. Yeah. They're investigating this this cavern. It was like a temporary uh, layer. <laughs> That's a good word. A temporary layer for, for the illithid that they fought. And so there were some leftover items uh, that they were going through. And one of them was a scroll of summon greater demon. And he... You know, they're like, oh, well, you know, we'll just take this and we're not going to use it, obviously, and we'll just leave. And they all left except for this character who stayed in the room and went, well, now it's time to summon an incubus. What? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a bit of a... He's a wild he's, card. He's fun. He is a wild card. He comes up with some crazy stuff and it, it leads to great things like Hilarity. that's how they got introduced to the npc named cause yep who is who was uh that incubus sort of i say sort of because uh once they once the rest of the party found out that he did this they went and slew the incubus the incubus reported to his master who is the demon who is the archdemon cause who decided to go and impersonate the incubus to this character because obviously he had an interest and try to worm his way in 
And he did because uh, he impersonated one of the townsfolk. And no one ever, like, they knew he was, like, up to no good and smarmy. And they had, like, this guy is bad news, but no one ever did anything about it. They're just like, well, I guess he's around now. (laughs) <laughs> well, because Ambrose, the character, was just so like infatuated with him. It's like nobody wants to rain on his parade. It's like yeah. all we have is like this bad feeling about this guy. It's like Ambrose, you need to pick better boyfriends. <laughs> Despite the bad feeling, the paladin never checked in on that with her divine sense. Oh no. Yeah, it was and it was like, I don't know, 10, 11 sessions before anything came of that. It was a slow burn, which was a delight for me course oh okay now i'm starting to realize what kind of dm you are mm. oh well i mean that's just that one example that doesn't happen every game <laughs> oh goodness um one thing i will ask and to both of you if you could sit down and have lunch with any person in the world alive or dead oh i choose alive <laughs> That's a classic one. I yeah, couldn't couldn't not <laughs> say that. Jacob, Jacob, <laughs> um, I oh love it. Gosh. Who who would <laughs> you like to resurrect from the dead and make a life again? <laughs> oh gosh, who would I talk to? It's another interesting question. That's yeah. There's too many. Might be Tolkien though. Yeah, I mean he also speaks the language, so that that helps. It'd be rough to be to like, because oh my, my first gosh. thought was like, oh yeah, well, like let's do Caesar or something like that, and then he comes back and you don't understand each other, and it's like, well, this was a waste. I guess I'll go <laughs> get the shovel again. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna play by TARDIS rules and assume ah, that like just, if, you if, can if, understand, understand anybody. Yeah, sure. Yes. It's great. It's great. Um, I who was I, that? I, there was a, a a guy that Diogenes. He laughed himself to death after saying a joke, something like that. That seems like a a, a good one. I don't know who that is. I've never heard that story. Me either. Oh man, but then oh, there's just too many people. I was like, man, mm-hmm. Mozart. Oh, yeah. Like Mozart or Beethoven or like not Rossini, maybe Verdi. <laughs> um, maybe Wagner, maybe, but I'm not. Eh. No, no. No. He's no. a jerk. Yeah, right. Right, exactly. Um, um, Maybe Bellini. Bernstein. Bernstein. Oh, Bellini. God, there's too many. It's too many. Um, God. Bernstein would be so much fun. Um, oh, there's gosh. a there's actually a fun story with Bernstein. Um, in my town, there was uh, I grew up and I lived in Myrtle Beach, um, South Carolina for a little bit, and there was a an opera singer who came down and just lived there. And he was well into his like 60s and 70s and was still performing fairly regularly around the town and um, doing concerts and things and told the story about Bernstein. And he was auditioning for, um, I think, a revival of West Side Story and Bernstein Mm. was in attendance for it. And he came in and he sang for Tony and just blew the rafters out, just sang his heart out. And then they go, okay, well, great. Thank you so much. Now we're going to ask you to read some dialogue. And when he opened his mouth, he said, oh, Maria, I love you. And had this just thick Southern accent. And Bernstein said, stop. He got up, walked from the back of the um, auditorium to the front of the stage and said, um, Sir, and I'm not going to say the singer's name. Um, so, sir, you have an incredible voice. Um, but when you open your mouth, um, banjos fall out. Um, you are not right for this role, but you are an incredible singer. So I would just like you to know that. And that was his way of just kind of dismissing him off to the yep. side. 
And he said, you know, I, I did not take any offense to that. I understood exactly what he was looking for, but I, for whatever I could do, I could not get rid of my Southern accent. Oh so. my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, oh, can you imagine a, a Tony with a Southern accent? <laughs> no offense. No, no, no. no. <laughs> If we, if we can have the gorgeous things of Oklahoma sung with a Southern accent, then we can oh. absolutely have a Southern or even a, a heavy Brooklyn uh, Tony. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Um, so one thing that I do want to say to both of you is that um, this has been an incredible time. I've had so much fun. Um Number one, uh, thank you for bringing up Pokemon because I <laughs> try to find ways to bring it up. Um, Bulbasaur is the best. I have Bulbasaur's everywhere. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Uh, <laughs> Dragon it on trips. Not that one, but she is a <laughs> I plus do. I have, a, trips. I have a Bulbasaur. She is my she is my emotional, emotional support. support Bulbasaur. Yes. I mean, your emotional support cabbage. Yes. Um, Yes. Um, Dragonite or Sylveon for me, hands down. Yes. Okay. Um, well, and I'm going to go with. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I got to go with Tyranitar because of the name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Um, so I, I'm going to try to do this. So I'm actually working on a cosplay back here. Uh, that Ooh. is Umbreon. Oh. That's so cool. Is that just a kim like a black kimono with a yellow obi? Uh, kind of. Um, I don't really. It's more like Middle Eastern inspired. Oh, uh, okay. So it's really just like a sash with um, a really heavy robe over top of it, Ooh. Um, and then some like um, harem pants down at the bottom. Like nice. they are, they are very full. Um, that sounds awesome. Uh, I love creative cosplays like that. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, but not only that, it is it is so clear that both of you are so passionate about what you do. You have a great sense of humor. You have a great sense of community inviting other people into your storytelling. Um, and thank you for inviting us, the audience here, and me um, into your world. Because I'm sorry, but you guys are incredible. So oh, thank, you, thank so you so much. much. Well, also the more the merrier, right? Like, let's mm -hmm. like come on in. The water's fine. Like, let's go have fun. Like, please, like most of I, it. I is. just, I just, that's true. There is, there is some water there on Orda that you don't want to, you don't want to go there. Those are the sections <laughs> that I DM. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was referencing something else. Um, some of the world building. That we had yeah. done that literally sailors will come back after sailing through this patch of water and they'll come back and they're just in a deep sleep and you can't wake them up inspired by bermuda triangle type um, yeah legends yeah so anyway sorry let's turn on the, <laughs> please come on in it's gonna be like we we the more i just i love i have been a lifelong nerd and i love nerding out about so many things obviously and I cannot wait to nerd out with people about this world and just share it with everybody. And yes, it just, I, I, mm, ah, mm. I'll throw in another <laughs> Futurama reference. It's going to be fun on a bun. Yep. Yes. Okay. That one I do recognize. Um, <sighs> so to make sure that everyone can stay in contact, um, uh, contact with you, I want to ask, um, what are going to be the socials, um, that you stay most active on or that you, uh, would like people to know about? Yeah. So I, I managed to put, oh, this is also for audio though. Um, but, uh, so we're at world of Orda pretty much everywhere. And that's world like normal of, and then Orda is U R D A, um, but we're most active on TikTok, and then we post our TikToks to other platforms for now while we're, you know, Jacob and I are ju juggling jobs and stuff. That's that's what we can manage. Um, it, uh, and the, the exception to that is Instagram, which has a one in front of it because Instagram yes. was weird about us. I tried to register it as the, the, uh, all the other ones, but they said no. And then they told me that the username was taken. Yeah. 
and it's Which taken is... by me somehow. Yeah. So that's super fun. And then our website is also World of Orda, and that's where we're pas pasting, posting, posting yeah. our chapters, pasting our chapters. No, posting our chapters. Um, uh, we're posting our chapters both on the website and uh, on our Wattpad, which also is World of Orda. We we just, you know, one of the pieces of advice we got from Comic-Con this past year was just keep the same handle everywhere. Yes. So World of Orda, that's our website, it's, our, it's all our socials, except for Instagram until we can hopefully, I don't know, I don't know if that will ever get fixed because there's no Facebook support <laughs> or Meta. Meta, like yeah. just the support is non-existent. Like, do you want to submit a ticket? I have. No one has gotten back to me. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. But would you like so, to submit another ticket? Oh yeah, that's how. Exactly. Oh yeah, trying to get her, um, trying to get us both on the Facebook like administration. Uh, oh yeah, that was a nightmare. It, I, I I tried that like ten times before it worked. Yeah, super fun. And then it was even difficult to get because uh, I had we just kind of uh, uh, not ported but converted one of my one of my YouTube channels for the World of Orda YouTube channel because I had been posting. Um, our our uh, vods of our sessions there. So if you want to catch up, um, we're basically oh, critical gosh. role. <laughs> yeah, I mean production value is the same. Uh, the yeah, totally the same. The um, it's actually better as a podcast. So if you just want to play it and listen to it, that's great. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I tried to you know invite him to make sure he had admin access to the the YouTube page as well, and that also took you know like two or three tries before it actually works. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we are. Um, we are most active on TikTok. Um, we get those notifications. We make sure we, that I, I love chatting with people. Um, and so please come hang out with us. Um, yeah, mostly on wide, TikTok. Go ahead. Uh, and, and there's a wide variety of content, which has been mentioned, you know, so there's a little, yeah. even if you don't want it for, you know, whatever the, the cabbage videos, then maybe you would like to see <laughs> our puppy every once in a while. Sage is on there and she does strange things to objects <laughs> in our home sage is fun um and then i you know i'm a singer and i i still love singing and so but now i'm moving into songs that like just i i love and can play on the piano <laughs> just the chords um so that's been a lot of fun to share as well um and then the lore drops have also been a lot of fun keeping those concise we will eventually do like deeper dives into the lore but tiktok gets like the the one minute version <laughs> which is a little it's a little easier to digest <laughs> for a lot of people <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I did a pronunciation video. So if you go and you read uh, and you're like, how the heck do I pronounce this name? Please tell me that you are having trouble. I'm an opera singer, so I love telling people how to pronounce things. <laughs> Don't ask me. I'll tell you the wrong word or the wrong way. Um, Even if I know the correct way, I might tell you the wrong way just because I think it's funny. Uh, Jacob. That's not true. That's I know, not true. right? I, I won't, All I won't those do diction that. classes. I will tell you. I will tell you the way that Kristen thinks is wrong because I secretly believe it's right. <laughs> His name is Faron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is that so was much my evil. <laughs> um, so just just write it in IPA and we'll be good. All right now, I kid you not. As we have gone through and we have decided, like, okay, you know, we're not Tolkien, so we did not come up with the elves' language. We just decided, okay, it's going to be, you know, Irish adjacent. And so we'll, we'll pull some words here and there and we'll swap out some letters. Um, but for Irish specifically, because I have tried to study Irish multiple times. And every time that set of phonics threatens to destroy my mind. And I have studied so many languages, as you know, like opera, like we, we, mm -hmm. we study basically everything. Mm -hmm. Any set of phonics or figuring things out with IPA and everything, like, I don't know what it is about Irish. I love the sound of that language so much, but I cannot seem to comprehend it. And so when we do our Irish adjacent words, I change the phonics a little bit to be something a little more comprehensible. And a lot of that I borrow Two from English IPA. <laughs> 
to add that last line in there because I'm sure that's that they feel comprehensible. That's true. That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, I do borrow a lot of kind of our considerations for figuring out how to spell things um, is, is from is based on my knowledge of IPA and just like because that's that's the only international alphabet we have. So it's, eh, might as well. IPA type org <laughs> is your best friend. Um, I love sorry. IPA so much. And you know, it's so funny though. I was so sheltered. Um, uh, when I was working at Starbucks, I, somebody asked me if my shirt said IPA and I was like, huh, I didn't, I didn't know you knew what IPA was. <laughs> and she was like, the beer. And I was like, IPA is a beer. <laughs> because to me, IPA was the international phonetic alphabet. I yes. did not know it was a beer. A terrible, oh. terrible beer. <laughs> it, it really, it, I'm sorry, IPA. I fully respect your your creative process. Um, it is it is not palatable by my taste. <gasps> I I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a stout or a red. I I just oh gosh. And then there's double IPA. Oh, it's it. Mm, 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 no. I'll take some. Uh, non-alcoholic apple cider Ooh, mm. nice choice and very I, very appropriate for the like the holiday season yeah right oh my gosh yes so good um well thank well, you so much for having us this has been so much fun and also i don't has. know if you guys do repeats but i like if we want if you guys want us back i would totally come <laughs> please <laughs> please come back yes <laughs> Especially so we can meet Emily. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, Emily has been with us. Uh, she has been using the uh, the Tilda Schwa account. Oh, that ah, is Tilda. Okay. okay. Hi, Emily. That was you. Okay. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, so uh, we would love to have you back. Um, yeah. Please, please, Yay. please. And please, for our audio listeners, please go give them um, some love. Please go watch them on Sunday nights at what time? Uh, it's two to five Pacific. Two to five Pacific, which mm -hmm. makes it um, Eastern time. I think that's six to nine, if I'm not mistaken. Five to five to eight Eastern, four to five seven. To eight Eastern. Yeah, four to seven Central. Mountain is going to be three to six, unless you're most of the year for everyone. Unless you're in Arizona, then it changes because Arizona does not observe daylight savings time. <laughs> Jacob is our numbers guy. So uh, whenever I try to figure that out, it's like, I, can, I feel like I can see the the wheel, like that, that the wheel of death just in front of my eyes. I'm like, hold, please. <laughs> uh, math. Oh, oh, oh so I mean, remember, yeah. Like, and just remembering all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it was useful to be able to do that in mortgage because I'd have to call people all over the country. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you can't be like, well, I'm awake, so they should be. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that. Oh um, my goodness. Well, as we close out our um our episode here tonight, um, I do want to give a major shout out to our moderators and to our producers. Um, this episode, Yay. along with every other episode forever and ever and ever, is dedicated to Capone, our moderator, fellow comedian, critic, encourager, and great friend. Um, you can listen for free, everybody's favorite four-letter word. Uh, well, then there's the other one, but we're not going to talk about that one. Um, anyway, ah! you can find us pretty much everywhere you tune into podcasts. For updates, announcements, and info on our upcoming tour, please follow us on social media. Um, and if you are still tuning in with us, uh, do not go anywhere. At the end of every single podcast, we do like to go and raid another channel. Rating is nothing uh, more than taking our audience here with our podcast and through the magic of the interwebs, uh, taking you and transporting you to another creator on Twitch. Um, you do not need to do anything on your side. We will take care of everything on our side. Um, we just ask that you go and give them a follow, give them a comment, show them some love and interact with them. Uh, tonight, we will be rating um, Archeros, and I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, uh, but they are a wood carver that is hand carving some Pokemon characters. <gasps> so, I know, right? That sounds so cool. <laughs> 
Um, so please go give him some love. Uh, you do not need to do anything on your side. So we're going to go ahead and start raiding now. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be a delay with this or not. If there is, I'm so sorry. If there is none, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you. Did that do? Did it do the thing? <laughs> uh, I'm watching Twitch right now. Random dancing until it does. Oh, right at the top of the chat. Oh, uh, I think we did it. Yes. Awesome. Uh -huh. awesome. All right, so 